Liam, let's look back at your debut, Zandvoort. You were getting on a plane from Japan, expecting to have a normal weekend as a reserve driver. What, what did you think the weekend held for you? There always, I mean, I've now been reserved for, well, I had been reserved for a year and a half. Um, so we go to these races every weekend and, I, you know, you always have to be ready or as ready as you can be, but um, you never expect to actually be needed because something like, for something to happen, it's extremely rare. Um, so you, you never expect to drive. Um, and I flew in from Japan. I had some activities in Japan during the week. So I actually only flew in on Thursday. I landed like midnight on Thursday. And then I go to the track on Friday, like a, like a normal day. Um, but traveling there, yeah, just expecting a, a normal weekend as, uh, as reserve. And presumably to be even less ready, you spent Friday in the garage with Red Bull Racing rather than uh, Scuderia Alfa Tori. Yeah, which is where I've been most of the year. My, all my, basically the way it had worked is my travel and hotels and everything and um, transport was, was through Red Bull. So um, I, I was in the Red Bull garage watching the session. Um, and it's tricky because obviously I'm grateful for this opportunity. I know how, how, how lucky I am, but you know, I'm watching 20 guys live my dream. Um, so it's extremely frustrating at the same time. And, and uh, I, you know, sometimes it's not enjoyable to watch. Um, I would say most of the time it's not enjoyable to watch because I just want to, want to be driving. So um, they can be tricky weekends. So describe your emotions from watching Daniel crash. So I got, I, I was watching the session obviously and the you know, normal person watching just looked like a normal crash. I didn't think anything of it. Then they showed a replay of the team radio and the radio was uh, basically Daniel talking about his hand. He said something about um, his hand. And I remember seeing, reading the, because they put a description of it. I, I read the comment he made about his hand and there was a flash through my, my head, like basically of a possibility of, you know, something. But it was honestly, it was weird. It was like half a second and then it was gone. And then I just carried on watching the session like normal. So, because they restarted the session and, and, and I kept watching and then about maybe 10, 15 minutes later, my phone uh, goes off and I look down at my phone and it's a message from, uh, from Marco, from AlphaTauri. Um, and that was basically the point I knew straight away what it was about because it basically obviously I linked it back to the crash. Um, and he, it was, the message was you need to come to the hospitality as soon as the session's done. Um, and there was about 25 minutes of the session left and it was the longest 25 minutes. Honestly, I was pacing around the garage. All the rebel engineers were wondering what I was doing and uh, I was just pacing around the garage waiting for the session to finish and I was basically went straight to Alpha Tori and then uh, found out what was happening. So did you have, in PR terms, in how you presented yourself to the outside world, did you have that difficult balance of wanting to go yes and punch the air and at the same time look sort of a bit sober and uh, concerned for, for Daniel? <clears throat> to be honest, it wasn't even either of those. It was more knowing the mountain we were going to have to climb in 12 hours to get prepared for, for what we were about to do. It wasn't so much, obviously it's exciting and, and you know, obviously I felt, I definitely felt for Daniel, but both of those things were overcome by the, we have so much to, to prepare for, I have one session, this is going to be really, really difficult. And knowing that, um, as a driver, you get one shot at F1. And um, for me, it's, it's come now and, and you have to take that opportunity, but it came in a very difficult situation. So knowing that it's, it's one shot and you have to, to make the most of it, but knowing how, how tricky it was gonna be, that was really what was sort of um, overpowering any other, other thoughts. So who actually was the person who said the magic words, Liam, you're in the car tomorrow? Um, I actually, that morning, before the before any of this had happened, maybe three or four hours before, I had actually had a sort of meeting with, with Dr. Marco. And in that meeting, I was basically trying to tell him that I was ready for Formula One. And I was trying to almost sell my soul and, and basically explain that, um, you know, I'm, I'm ready for this opportunity that I've, you know, been put through a lot of, of stages and, and you've prepared me for this. So, you know, wh you know when will you give me this opportunity? And, and um, then, you know, that afternoon the incident happened and, and so I, I saw Dr. Marco again, uh, maybe an hour after practice um, and he asked me if I was ready and I said yes. Um, and that was basically 
nothing was confirmed then, but I, that was when I had an idea that, that it was probably, you know, I was probably going to need to drive. And then, so I went to the driver's briefing as a precaution and it was halfway through the driver's briefing that uh, I was standing next to, to Marco um, and he told me, uh, yep, you're driving. So safe to say that second half of the driver's briefing I was tuned in for. <laughs> and then you must have had a very long Friday night with the engineers. And I mean, at any point, did you feel as though your brain was frying with all the information? Did you think, am I really ready for this? Or do you think you've, through the sort of Alpha Tori method and the Red Bull method, did you feel actually prepared for it all? Um, I felt, you know, I always, I feel prepared for Formula One, but it's just the timing of this. You know, having one practice session, the conditions that, you know, I think we knew we, knew we were going to face. Um, yeah, I would say I'm, I'm really, you know, I always feel ready for Formula One at the start of a season, but not in, not in this position. So I knew it was going to be very, very tough. Um, and that night was a lot of, a lot of work um, to get everything sorted, uh, to drive a Formula One car. Operationally, it's so complicated. And that's really one of the most challenging parts is basically learning how to operate the car. Because once you understand that, then there's so much time you can find within basically, you know, using these settings on the go. That's, that was really, the, the challenging part. So yeah, I didn't sleep much at all on Friday night. Um, so FP3, there it is, it's pouring with rain, but you're about to go out and take part in a Grand Prix weekend for real. You're supposed to be there because you're gonna race. Can you recall still what you thought as you got in the car, engaged the gear and the guy waved you out of the garage and you were on your way? Yeah, I think um, it even starts before that walking into the garage and seeing your name so we're seeing my name on the on the wall on the car um and i'll never forget getting in the car being strapped in and as a as a kid i used to play all the formula one games and when i was eight years old i was probably playing formula one 2010 and the like scene when you get in the car before a session like the options menu is you sitting in the garage in the car and there's all the cameras and media around the front of the car basically filming you and it was exactly the same um, and it took me straight back there when I when I got in the car momentarily um, and so that was obviously a pretty cool feeling and and driving out um, it's very very special obviously but um, because of the nature of the session that that we're about to you know I knew what how I was going to be with the way the conditions were and things like that um, there was just so much to, to think about that um, from the moment I drove out I think all those other feelings went away and it was basically focusing on, on, on the job. Formula One is all about confidence. To drive these cars are so fast and, and they take so much commitment that you need to be so comfortable and confident with the car that you can you know, basically place it, put it wherever you want. And that takes time uh, and obviously something that we didn't have. So having that confidence to do that, I was almost faking it, knowing how much speed I could take through certain corners but not feeling it. Um, made that yeah one of the hardest things ever I'd, I'd done in a race car. Did you sleep a bit better on Saturday night? I had a great sleep on Saturday <laughs> night compared. Yeah, I had a I slept normally for me if I get eight hours I'm pretty happy. Um, I had nine I think nine and a half on Saturday on Saturday night. Yeah, so um, it was a much better sleep. Okay. And then then we come to the race and let, let's start by stating the obvious. You finished the race in very difficult conditions. That's already a major achievement. Everybody always talks to Formula One drivers about the pressure and everything they're under, but let's remember you guys all started doing this because you wanted to go racing, you love it. So did you have time to enjoy the race? Were you enjoying yourself? You overtook some big names, you've kept it on the island. Did, were you thinking at some point, this is actually fun, I'm having a great time? Um, because of the nature of the race, because of the way it was, honestly, um, it was hard to to sit back and, and sort of really take it in because I think the build up I, I definitely had moments of um, of you know thinking to myself how how cool this is to, to to be doing it, but just you know I rolled it to the grid on at the start of the race and it was raining, it started to rain and we were on slicks, so with the nature of the race there was so much going on that it was just constantly. Um, constantly busy working out a situation that was unfolding. Um, so it wasn't until the end of the race. I think when I crossed the line, the in lap, um, that was probably the, the first point where I actually started to, to, to soak it in. 
that's it, that's race one out of the way. Now this is Formula One so that nobody takes any prisoners in this sport. You're probably thinking, I've done that, you're going to come here and people are already going to be expecting more of you in a way. Oh, he's going to have the full weekend to, to prepare. Even though Franz Tost himself has said you need, the driver needs 6,000 kilometers to be comfortable in the car. So are you, do you feel a bit more pressure going into this weekend now or, or do you feel more comfortable with yourself and looking forward to it more? Um, more, more comfortable for sure than last week. Um, but that's not to say that I'm expecting to, to do a, you know, a much better job. Um, it's just more comfortable knowing that I have, we have time to build everything up. Basically, I have more of an understanding of where we're sitting with the car, with the car setup, where we're going, the direction we're going for the weekends, that kind of stuff. I just had no idea last week. Um, didn't know what I was driving. Um, because it wasn't important at the time. So now, yeah, having a bit more of a, a proper build up. Um, but there's no, for me, I, I, you know, it doesn't mean that I'm expecting to do a, a much better job during the week. And I think we'll find out. It's only been a few days, but has there, what sort of reaction have you got from New Zealand? Do you know? Has it become a, a huge story over there already? Yeah, it's been, it's been pretty cool. The thing is, this, um, it's been an incredible journey and obviously it's only really just, just starting at this end and, and I haven't made it yet, but um, just to break through and, and have, you know, do a Grand Prix and, and have a drive. Um, there's a lot of people that have followed this journey for a lot of years and been behind it. And um, so to finally at least, you know, break in the door, um, it's very, very exciting back home and the support has been uh, absolutely incredible, to be honest. Um, so that's yeah that's been really really cool to, to to read and to see final question have you have you spoken to daniel have you told him to take his time and make sure he's fully fully fit before coming back not afterwards honestly um I, i'm glad to know that is that the surgery went well um and you know this is never the way that i would want to enter formula one so um it was very unfortunate what happened but um you know as you said before as as formula one drivers especially in my position you get one shot and whenever that comes you have to to take it with both hands so um, that's that's what I'm trying to do but regarding Daniel I spoke to him before the race um, before he had a surgery and, and he was very supportive um, to, to basically help out wherever he could which was really really nice of him but um, since then I, I imagine he's recovering right now.